All right, I am really excited about today's flight. Um, not only for going flying, but we're gonna go visit a museum over at Port Townsend. Uh, I've been thinking about this flight since the last time I was over there, and they were under construction and it was late in the afternoon and they were about ready to close, so we didn't get a chance to go all the way around, but we get to see what their youth program is all about, and uh, we're gonna talk to their director and uh, show you what the museum at Port Townsend is all about. This channel is about working on aircraft and flying those airplanes. So come take a seat and let's go for a flight. <laughs>
got the Super Cub turning on final. See if I can nail the center line this time. Oh yeah. Paint tower, stand by. Stand by, Paint tower, 6, 7, 9, hour 1, can we make a short approach on this one? 6, 7, 9, hour 1, short approach approved. Short approach approved, 6, 7, 9, hour 1. Stenson 5, 0, kilo, flash start, run with you for active takeoff. Spray out, push takeoff, Stenson 5, 0, kilo. Lights, camera action. Turning right base, zero 09, full stop, Jefferson County. Jefferson County, 
County, 5 to go, turning final, 0-9, full stop, Chester County. Go, you can go ahead and take off next if you'd like. Five zero two is cleared. Alpha three parking uh, transient. Just go. Just go traffic. Time up. Take your take it off. Nine about uh, just go. Flaps out all of a sudden. Alright, so we have arrived here in Port Townsend at the Aero Museum, just uh, down the ways from the Goose. And uh, it's pretty quiet in here because all the activity is going on outside. They're having a Young Eagles event and where they take kids on their very first flights uh, free of charge. So this is all uh, due in part to the generous donation of pilots with their aircraft and their time. We're going to take a look around here um, at some of the exhibit items we have um, to see here at the Aero Museum. And then later on we're going to talk to Mike Payne, who is the director and uh, I guess jack of all trades here at uh, the Aero Museum. So uh, let's look at some of these great airplanes.
Well, I just want to first uh, thank Mike Payne for the uh, all access to the Aero Museum here at Port Townsend. So thanks again, Mike. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you so much for coming out. Yep, uh, absolutely. The, the kids took a look at your uh, YouTube page today and were pretty excited at the lunch table to, yeah, to see some of your content. And so I'm really excited great. about your youth program. If you can kind of maybe talk about the museum a little bit and you know how it works with the, with the youth program around sure. here. Yeah, the uh, museum, which was started in 2001 by a couple of uh, retired United Airlines um, employees, one a pilot, one a flight attendant, uh, Jerry and Peggy Tiot. Mm -hmm. uh, all along, um, they had been involved in helping youth find something to do other than get in trouble. Uh, and there's no better way uh, to avoid that type of um, activity than giving um, a meaningful purpose uh, to, to have a hobby um, or a vocation. Right, because kids, kids need something to do, so I might as well give them something that's, that's that, positive. That has a future. And, and, exactly. Exactly. It keeps them out of trouble. Yep. Well, ho hopefully. Well, hopefully. Hopefully out of trouble. <laughs> Um, and, and that's what uh, Jerry provided uh, by way of um, antique airplanes that he was restoring in a private hangar that he, that he owned uh, in Buckley, uh, Washington. Uh, he found that uh, if he got these kids involved in helping with the restorations, uh, they would show up on time and they would um, learn a skill. Uh, and in exchange, uh, Jerry was teaching them to fly. Oh, excellent. Right. So these kids were getting their pilot's license in exchange for helping uh, restore some of these great old vintage airplanes. Uh, fast forward uh, 25 years later, uh, here we are in the Port Townsend Aero Museum that uh, he started following the same formula <laughs> of um, maintaining, restoring, and operating uh, antique, vintage, and classic aircraft uh, with the involvement of our uh, local teenage population. Excellent. It's, and it's a good, it's a good combination. Uh, the museum currently uh, is 18,000 square feet of display space that's open to the public. We're a 501c3 publicly owned organization. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a large uh, separate restoration uh, facility where we do our maintenance and restoration. Uh, and we have a, a third building that is for paint and fabric. recover aircraft and refinish them. Uh, it's surprising how many uh, visitors come to the museum and, and they see the aircraft and they comment how beautiful they are and they have no idea, even after looking at them, that 80% of those airplanes are fabric covered. There's very little aluminum uh, covering on them. Right, which uh, is what kind of follows along with the, the vintage theme. Vintage right? theme, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Uh, airplanes were all covered uh, in that way at one point or mm -hmm. another um, prior to World War II. Uh, and that's a skill that we teach also, is recovering uh, aircraft. Uh, Which is kind of a dying art, by the way. It is a dying art. We, we don't have enough uh, business of uh, visitors coming to see the collection to, to justify, to justify um, and pay for the operation. Right. Uh, we supplement the operation um, by a couple of ways. Uh, one is uh, contract work. Uh, we do restorations for other people uh, for an hourly fee, mm -hmm. uh, and, and we involve the kids in that. Uh, and even though we're a nonprofit, that is, we're able to use that as earned income because that is the work necessary to support the program for the kids to work on. Right, right. Uh, and all of that money goes back into feeding the program and growing the program. So that is um, allowed underneath uh, um, the, the rules. Uh, we also have a very strong membership. We sell memberships so people can come and, and visit the museum uh, as many times during the year as they like uh, for individual, family, sponsor, supporter, visionary, and patron memberships. Uh, we also uh, accept donations. It's, it's a tax write-off for whoever's donating whatever they donate. Right. Right. Uh, and sometimes uh, the, the donated um, item is aviation related and sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's just something that um, we can sell uh, online or um, at one of our fundraisers as an auction item mm -hmm. uh, and that brings money into the program. Oh, excellent. And those, those are basically the three or four revenue streams that keeps, keeps this program going. Right. So, so how many airplanes do you have in this collection currently? Uh, we probably have on record just under 60 aircraft. Wow, that's um, impressive. 
Yeah, because for the 30 or so that you see on display uh -huh. that are finished, there are a number of projects that are waiting for their time to uh, shine in the, in the restoration shop. So shot. this would be one of those examples? An example like this. Yeah. This one happens to uh, belong to a customer that we're doing. This is a customer aircraft, uh, 1942 UPF 7 Waco White Light yep. uh, that we're doing for somebody. Uh, the Air Coupe, the silver polished airplane that you see in the background is a museum airplane. Uh, the kids that are here today in the program are working on recovering the wings today for that. Ah, so that's uh, that project. That's their project, okay. and they will be flying that when it's done, okay, uh, which will be fun for them. Yeah. Uh, and of course, it'll be on display in the museum also. We don't currently have an air coupe. Okay. Uh, so, so we're just looking forward to getting that finished. Now, I, as I was going through the museum, there was two airplanes that caught my eye. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of a big fan of the Peton Poles. Oh, interesting, yeah. And you have a Scout. We have a Sky Scout, yeah. Yeah, That's which a, isn't very... It's a rare version, version. of the Peden Pole. It is, yeah. Right. So it's, the Peden Pole normally has two seats. Yep. And this one only has one. Uh, yeah, same basic design, shorter, more nimble. I haven't personally flown it. We've had one or two teenagers uh, before we hung the airplane that got to fly it. Oh, that's um, amazing. I, I was in the Piper Cub chase plane when we were photographing it, and then you can see the <laughs> smile on that kid's face. <laughs> Uh, right behind yeah, yeah. that Model A engine. Oh yeah, you know, looking off to the side of the radiator. <laughs> you can't see straight ahead. No, yeah. Uh, neat airplane, really yeah, yeah. neat airplane. Uh, well, I've you? actually, I've actually been to uh, Broadhead in Wisconsin, which is the home of yes. the peat pole gathering, and it was That's amazing huge. to see how many different peat poles they had there, yeah. and those guys are characters with the way they adorn their aircraft oh and how much they love those airplanes. Right. Plus, the Kelch Museum down there is really amazing. Yeah. So. That's, that's, a, that's a neat, neat place to go. Yeah, we have a, one of our supporters uh, a year ago donated a Pete and Paul project to us for the kids to build. Uh, and that will be something we'll probably start on. We've got two airplanes in front of it, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm looking forward to that because it's a period correct home built airplane yes. from the uh, 50s. And almost, 40s. They almost say it's the original. It is home built. Um, yeah. 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 Um, the, the sorry the, okay, no the, the second airplane that I that yeah I, noticed, I wonder about that the yeah. second airplane I noticed because you caught me off guard with the Sky Scout yeah really. <laughs> you got me off guard with that one yeah most people don't even know what that is oh let, let alone have it as their favorite so really yeah well the yeah. first thing I noticed was the engine of course because you always have the radiator like yep. right in front of your face and then I and then I noticed I'm like there's only one seat yeah so that was really interesting but the the other airplane I noticed was you have an Aronka C three B yep. And that's a very, very yeah, rare true. airplane. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, it, it. Most people would look at that and think it was a toy, but it was a, that was actually a serious airplane. It was a serious time. airplane. Yeah, at yeah. the time, it, kind of a transitional airplane from uh, the right flyer mm -hmm. to the what became the Iraqi Champ. I mean, that thing's kind of somewhere in the middle. It is in the middle. Yeah. The original uh, C3, of course, didn't have brakes, didn't have doors. <laughs> They just reached out and grabbed the big, tall, thin tires to slow themselves down with leather gloves on. Really? Yeah. No. Nope, no. Nope. Of course, they had tail skids then also, which was helpful. Right. But um, yeah. So the, the wheels are right there. Interesting. Yeah. Um, ours is the last iteration of that mm -hmm. of that model, um, which had cabin doors, which was a luxury, not open. Um, ours has a single point ignition. Uh, the later E13s had uh, dual ignition, which is a, another safety huge, advancement. Huge, yeah, yeah, safety advancement. Uh, that airplane, unfortunately, we haven't flown it since we hung it. Uh, it's probably 15 years since we've flown that. Oh, wow. A long time, maybe, maybe 14 years. Uh, the last annual inspection we did, we noticed a little tiny hairline, what we believe to be a hairline crack on the engine case mm -hmm. up by one of the cylinders. Uh, and so, we thought, well, we'll just uh, zygo it and find it out, find out if that's it or, or not. New museum opened, it went up to the ceiling. Until we bring it back down, uh, we haven't been able to zygo it and oh. check it. But, so, yeah. yeah, interesting airplane. Yes, yeah. So that goes to question, what is your favorite airplane in the museum collection right now? Uh, that's, it's kind of a, an interesting question because there's favorite flying, there's favorite looking, mm -hmm. um, there's favorite to work on. And those three never line up. 
They don't line up. It's true. That's my, very my, true. My favorite to look at is probably the Beach Stagger Wing. Uh -huh. It's also the worst to work on, and it's one of the most difficult to fly. Mm -hmm. uh, our Stagger Wing is a, um, an early Stagger Wing, a C-17B Stagger Wing, uh, which is, most people are familiar with the D or later model Stagger Wings mm -hmm. because they made more of them, and more of them survived. Uh -huh. uh, most of the C models and earlier were, were destroyed uh, or in uh, museums. The C model and earlier, uh, the fuselage is 18 inches shorter mm -hmm. and uh, there are no control surfaces on the upper wing. So on the lower wing you have ailerons and just below the ailerons are split flaps that you deploy when you land and you, you do need those flaps because it comes in fast and you need the pitch attitude change. They don't increase lift, they just increase drag. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that they do is they create a big ball of dirty air right behind the aileron that you're trying to use to maintain your uh, roll control. Mm -hmm. So uh, a real handful in any kind of crosswind, that airplane. Mm, I bet. Uh, the owner that it was donated to us uh, by a, a gentleman named William Helsell, mm -hmm. whose grandson went through the program. Uh, Mr. Helsell was a, a successful attorney in Seattle for 50 years. Uh, he bought that stagger wing right out of law school uh, 50 years prior. Wow. Uh, and <clears throat> he had got to the point where he decided 50 years was long enough and he wanted to donate it uh, to a museum. Uh, we ended up with it in the condition, in the condition that you see it in. Uh, he gave us one piece of advice when he donated it. He said, uh, in, in the 50 years that I've owned this airplane, I've only almost wrecked it one time, and it was the day I bought it and my first landing after buying it. And he said it was the last time I ever flew it with shoes on my feet. So for 50 years, he flew it in his socks, and he never had a problem. And one time up in that airplane, as the left seat pilot in command, you understand what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the rudder pedals are narrow, they're jammed up in there, uh, there's structure around them, and uh, the hiking shoes and runners that we use today because they're so comfortable mm -hmm. simply don't work in that airplane. Oh, wow. It's, um, it's uh, loafers, leather sole loafers, uh, uh, deck shoes, or socks. That works great. Yeah. So he had a good point. So that's my favorite um, for looking, mm -hmm. uh, working on any of the um, fixed gear aircraft are, are pretty simple. Retractable airplane, retractable gear airplane like our Swift. We have a, a GC 1A, beautiful polished airplane. Um, fun to fly, 90 horsepower. It's amazing mm -hmm. for the uh, performance that you get on 90 horsepower from a 1946 airplane. Right. Uh, but come annual time, that retractable gear has a lot of complexity and a lot of potential for things to go wrong. So it needs to be looked at very closely every year. Uh, for flying, uh, just for the just for the flying aspect, uh, without a doubt, it's the Fairchild uh, PT-19, big oh. silver trainer there. Mm -hmm. the, the nicest flying airplane. It's really, the, uh, Fairchild. The controls are are so smooth. Um, everything, the rudder, the ailerons, they all work in harmony. Uh, you solo that airplane from the front. It's an open cockpit airplane. Usually, tandem seat airplanes you solo from the back. Mm -hmm. That one, uh, it's large enough uh, that you solo it from the front. And you can literally be flying that airplane with a baseball cap on and a pair of sunglasses and <laughs> not have an issue. You won't lose your cap. There is no air movement in that front cockpit. Oh, it, is, it is amazing. Everything goes around. It's a real joy to fly. Uh, unfortunately, um, we have to recover the control surfaces and the fuselage on that airplane when it was restored uh, almost 20 years ago. Uh, the husband and wife team that restored it, beautiful job, very authentic, uh, that they used um, aircraft grade cotton when oh. they recovered it. And it will no longer pass a, pass a punch, punch test. Hit. Yep, the cotton's failing. In fact, if you um, look at the side of that fuselage where you get in from the left wing, there are two patches uh, right on the side of the cockpit. Both of those are from where um, somebody's knee has bumped the fabric and mm -hmm. torn through it. Oh. And that's not even a sharp object. Right. Torn right through it. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I did get a ferry permit to fly it down um, from the North Cascades Vintage Aircraft Museum, okay. which is where it was donated mm -hmm. from. Uh, picked a really calm day and flew it down nice without issue. Uh, it's parked until we recover it. Right. So, but, but we can display it until that happens. Excellent. So nicest flying airplane.
I think that's about for the collection. They're all they're all different. They all have stories. Every one of those airplanes. Yeah, every airplane has a story. Has a story. It, Even it, the 172 has a story. They have stories too. <laughs> from the from the from the day it was purchased, the new right. owner, on through uh, the day that you are actually exactly. flying in it. So. Yeah. Yeah. So. I just want to say thank you. That oh, really you're good. so welcome. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. I agree this with is, this, you. You have an amazing story. This is a, oh, thanks. Come on no. in, Olivia. This, yeah. This, he does uh, the, a YouTube channel for oh, cool. uh, aviation. Very cool. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And I heard that you had participated in the um, Young Eagles program. Uh, yeah, yeah, through the through the through museum. The museum. Through, the yeah. museum. through the museum. Yeah. Uh, you just got your pilot license, is that correct? Uh, yeah, I got it last August. So Excellent. Excellent. Now. Yeah. So, and then you got to fly somebody special today, right? Uh, yeah, I got to fly my grandparents, so that was really nice. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I got to fly my dad too. You want? So, yeah. I did. You want? You want <laughs> yeah. to do like a one minute interview or anything with? Uh, sure, if you want to. Um, okay. So, uh, as I came in and talked to um, a lot of people and with Mike oh, yeah. about the Young Eagles program that's going yeah. on today, you had actually been one of the Young Eagles and mm -hmm. took a flight. And then tell me about that story about yeah. how so did that inspire you? I took a flight in Bremerton. I think I took a Young Eagles flight. And I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. <laughs> and um, the day that I went up, it was like like perfect weather for those like circular disc rainbows. Have you seen those oh, yet? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that was like, I don't know, it was just kind of magical. And so then I really wanted to get into aviation. So me and my dad were looking for a way to make that happen. And um, the museum, without the museum, I wouldn't have been able to get my license because awesome. they made it so that um, just like through working hard, I could do it for free. Um, and I would never have been able to afford that on my own because it's so right. expensive. Yes. But um, yeah, so essentially I, came in like twice a week and then near the end when I was getting close to getting my license I came in like four times a week I think right um and just working at uh, like eight hours a day helping them repair airplanes and whatnot and providing maintenance for people and then in return they have instructors so I could get my flight time in I could get ground time in and yeah that's awesome yeah, it was really nice <laughs> so today you actually participated well kind of participated in the Young Eagles um, no, you were, you, well, you, you flew one of the airplanes. I flew the museum's airplane at the same time as the Young Eagles that happened. Ah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, I took my um, grandma and my great grandma up. My um, great grandpa passed recently. Oh, and sorry. It's, it's okay. Yeah. It's we knew it was happening, <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, in this this past January, I think, and he was a pilot, and he was like really hoping to get to fly with me before he passed. Um, but it just didn't end up happening, so I got to take them instead, which was really nice. That's good. Yeah. Well, I'm sure he was there in spirit. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, not... congratulations on being a newly minted pilot, <laughs> and uh, welcome to the, the aviation community. You'll find that this is a really small community that uh, yeah. it, you will find people um, later in your career mm -hmm. that you will have bumped in or somebody knows somebody else. And yeah, it's just, that's, it's... that's already happened. I've been at the museum now for like four or five years so like just like being around the airport and like the aviation community here you know it's like so mm -hmm. close-knit and so many people from here go down to Arizona and that's where I go to college so I've gotten to see people from here down there too so oh, excellent yeah it's been really nice so cool wow yeah. well, it was very nice talking to you I nice think I appreciate you taking time thank you right. that's a great story so, so yeah one of many so many stories like that oh I it bet. is what makes this job so fun and so worthwhile. Exactly. Yeah, we could be fixing um, old airplanes in any hangar, but having the kids as part of it is is really uh, what makes it worthwhile. Yeah, and I, you know what? Honestly, I think that's what sets this museum apart from like any other museum is is the fact that you have this program and, and that you know you yeah. you involve uh, youth um, in in that way. So yeah, I do awesome. I do hear that, and I've I've heard that all along from the day Jerry started it. And, I see how this program works, and I just wonder why there's not more um, program, why, why there aren't more programs like this, mm -hmm. um, because it is so uh, beneficial to the young people, and the community is um, so behind it. Mm -hmm. You know, our local community loves what we're doing with the teenagers out here. Uh, it just seems like there would be more programs like this. So right. hopefully there are. We just don't hear about them. Yeah, who knows? Well, that's you know that's kind of my job is to there kind of go. go out and find those kind of places and publicize them and publicize them. Yeah, so, that's a great thing. Um, so we get a little more visibility for the museum and yeah, and uh, uh, 
um, yeah. Right. So, yeah. so, yeah. Cool. Well, well, thank you so much, Mike. I appreciate thanks for, all, all the time thank you and, so much and for the free your... access for, uh, you know, coming out here and make, let me uh, poke around your shop and... and I'm glad like, you did. So. I'm, I'm glad you did. Yeah, the, uh, the, the more people that find out about, you know, what's going on and, and uh, the better it is for general aviation. Exactly. Yeah. So, and that's, oh. that's, that's exactly what my channel is all about, is Perfect. just promoting aviation. Because it's, it's provided me uh, a really good uh, um, uh, career. Yep. And a livelihood, so Good. it's kind of my way of giving back. Giving it back. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Cool. All right. All right. See you later. All right. Thank you. Temperature 2, 3 Celsius. Dew point 1, 4 Celsius. Altimeter 3, 0, 0, 1 inches of mercury. Remarks density altitude 1, 2, 0, 0. Let's go home. This was a fun time. I'm really glad I got to beat Mike and uh, got to see some of the kids. And I really like what they do here. It's uh, really good for. Uh, Youth programs. It's just, it's just all around. It's just a great thing for, uh, for general aviation. Just like the, uh, the Young Eagles program. The, every pilot that comes out to uh, volunteer his time, he pays for all his gas. All volunteer out of their own pockets, and uh, it really does a great thing. Like uh, Olivia coming back and getting her pilot license and uh, being able to take some of. Uh, know her family up and uh, hopefully she has a uh, long career in aviation and uh, love to hear those inspiring stories because that's what's all about it's it's more than just airplanes and uh, rules and regulations it's uh, it really it really is community uh, that means a uh, means a lot to me to be able to get back to this community because it's uh, taken care of me in my entire life up and do a uh, conjuncted uh, run up. I know this airplane flew well today to get here. We're well off the peg, which is nice. Extra rich. 1700. One mag, back to both. The other mag. Back to both. Oh, Pete. Temperatures and pressures are all good. Check the uh, alternator on the way down. All controls. I don't care how mundane that seems, always check your controls. Controls. Instruments are both set. Gas is set. Flaps are set. Trim is now set. Prop fixed radios are tuned. Run up complete. You got complete. Uh, I would expect to be up and rolling, maybe off the ground by 2,000 feet. There, that marker over there. Uh, if anything goes wrong, we're going to cop the power, get the airplane on the ground, and uh, roll safely to the end. Once we get off the ground, you don't have many options straight ahead. There's a couple of fields. Uh, out that way, I'll get some eyeballs as I'm cruising along. But up to 750 feet, that's the decision height, in order to come back. And it is a pretty strong uh, tailwind coming back, so expect that. Jefferson County traffic, Stenson 9250 is going to be taking uh, runway 9. We are departure to the east, straight out at Jeffco. Camera. Jeff, pardon, Jeff Code, do you know how late the uh, Swiss Goose is open? Uh, negative. I don't, uh, I don't remember, uh, 
There's still a couple of people up there that uh, I don't know if they were just leaving. Jeff, go. I definitely don't know if they have any pie either. Oh, uh, that's what's important. Right? Alright. No more fun and games. Aviation is serious business now. Oh, nine. Did I just say 09? Dang it. I mean 09. Alright. There's my 2000 remaining marker. Thank you. How was it? That. Airspeed's alive. There's the tail. Oh, we're gonna make this. Right at the 2000 marker. Woo! Yeah, baby. Woohoo! See the Aero uh, Museum? Yeah, there ain't much out here to land on. enough to get over there. 200 feet, those flaps are out. Retrimming.
Simpson, 50 Kilo, contact ground, 1850 1, Kilo, thanks. Ten ground, Stenson, 90250 Kilo, uh, off of um, uh, 3 4 left at Alpha 7 for East Condos. Uh, echo, please. 90250 Kilo, ping ground, director of the start taxi. Alpha 2 Echo and the uh, use caution on the area. Delta 2, Delta Lima and hold short taxiway golf. Alright, uh, straight ahead. Uh, understand uh, Echo non movement. Uh, Delta 2 and we'll hold short at golf. 5 0 kilo. 5 0 kilo holding short at golf. That's 5 0 kilo. Continue taxi via golf. Cross right 3 4 right golf 3 then Foxtrot. Alright, uh, golf cleared cross 1 6 left and then Foxtrot 5 0 kilo. Thank you. Well, that was a quick trip over to Port Townsend to visit the Aero Museum over there. And uh, that was a kind of a, an experience to be able to have all that access to walk through all the hangars and show off uh, what they do over there um, as far as the restoration of old airplanes and uh, giving the, the kids uh, uh, something to do and uh, be rewarded for um, doing some sweat equity in the form of uh, flight training. So it's a great program over there. Um, if you ever get a chance to help support them, stop on by, check out the collection, or even make a donation yourself. So uh, special thanks out to Mike Payne for uh, granting me that access. And uh, for now, we're gonna close the hangar and go home, but uh, I mean, oh, you're flying. Be good flying. Now I'm not some rich and famous YouTuber asking you to like and subscribe to this channel. I'm an aviator asking you to like and subscribe to this channel. Because that's the way YouTube works. If you don't click those buttons, YouTube doesn't know that you want to see more aviation content and won't show you more. But if you don't like what you've seen, please leave me a nasty comment down below. Because that's the way the internet works. And may all your flying be good flying. Alright, I'm really excited about today's flight. Not only um, for... Ah. How can a 150 make that much noise? To visit their museum and talk to their directors and see what the deal is with uh, their program and uh, how they deal with... Uh, back and forth so that was a neat trip um, that was kind of a, a, a bleh, bleh. gonna close the doors here and head on out but bleh, bleh, bleh.